welcome to worship in the cathedral. And it's very, very good indeed to welcome Canon Sophie Jelly, who's going to be consecrated finally on the 21st of September as the new Bishop of Doncaster. Um, this has been a long time coming and it's just great to have her here this morning. It's bewildering, but the arrangements for COVID keep changing. And it's just worth briefly um, going through them. Uh, unless you're taking the service, uh, for which there's an exemption, everyone is asked to wear a face mask in the cathedral. This is up to you, but it is a legal requirement. And a number of other things are now also legal requirements. We are not able to hand anything out to you. That's why you can find it on the seats. And we do earnestly ask you to take your service sheet away with you. Now, we might both think this is a bit excessive, but that's what we are told is the Church of England's interpretation of the law. So we've no choice. Um, it's great to see you here. And if you'd like to receive communion, as before, we invite you to come and use the bactericidal, that's a hard word to say, bactericidal gel, and then come forward to receive. Um, as you receive communion, you're allowed to take your mask off and put it, again, put it on again. You're not required to sort of ferret about under your mask. So that also is legally possible. Some important news in the cathedral this week. Um, the gift shop is reopening and with it a mini coffee shop. Um, we'll, be, we'll be supplying takeaway coffees, teas and other delicious things um, as it's not yet possible to use the main shop. And both of those are reopening on Tuesday morning. So please, please, please come during the coming week because my colleagues who will be staffing the uh, Coffee Come gift shop be really, really keen to see you. That's going to be open the same time as the rest of the cathedral is open. And just to remind you, we're closed completely on Mondays. All the rest of the week, we're open 11 till 2. And then today, we're open after this service till 1 o'clock. People have been asking me, when will the cathedral reopen fully? Um, along with most cathedrals, we feel that actually what we're doing at the moment, which requires constant cleaning of the interior, actually that gap's sufficient. And certainly till September, we don't imagine we'll be opening longer, but early September, we'll then, we'll then look, at, look at how to do that. You'll understand we don't have volunteers on at the door yet, so the load on staff is really quite considerable. And because it's slightly stressful, that's why we feel this is a sort of proportionate way of responding, and we know you'll understand. Please may the day come when we can sing a hymn, which seems to be some way off. But um, we can, without singing, pray for that very intently. Thank you very much.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome indeed, whether you're here with us in the cathedral or joining us remotely at home at this time. On my first official visit here to the Cathedral for Worship, may I say what a privilege it is to be here with you, in the presence of God and with his gathered people. And it's my prayer that through this service, we may each be strengthened to walk in faith and hope and love as we seek to shine as lights for Christ in the world. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that we may trust in the protection of God. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading of from the letter of Paul to the Romans. 
Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Let us wait upon the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, Truly you are the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, and saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? 
When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. I wonder whether you have ever had an experience of being beaten by the waves, for the wind was against you. Our Gospel reading this morning is a very well-known episode in which Jesus, having just performed the astonishing miracle of feeding 5,000 men and their families, sends the crowds away and then also the disciples ahead of him to get their boat and cross the lake. If you've ever visited this particular stretch of water, you'll know that this feels rather more like a sea than a lake. It's vast and no doubt with a high wind, rather frightening. Instead of going with them, Jesus takes the opportunity to get away with his father, to spend some time on his own in prayer. We can imagine how demanding the day has been, surrounded by great crowds of people. We then see the disciples getting into trouble in the fourth watch of the night, so somewhere between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning, they too must have been exhausted from the day, exhilarating as it was. And now a storm rises up and even experienced fishermen, they were beleaguered, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. The word here implies a battering assault on the whole person, repeatedly coming again and again, relentless in its rhythm. Well, many of us in these last months have perhaps felt a bit like this. If not now, then certainly perhaps in previous weeks. Whether taken ill ourselves, had loved ones taken from us, been denied access to elderly relatives or those deemed clinically vulnerable, news kept coming day after day. We had a phrase in our house, I think I'm coronad out. I might just have to switch off the news for a minute. And it wasn't said as a joke. It was rather overwhelming, wasn't it? I won't use the word unprecedented, fear not. But we may feel beleaguered at this time and that the wind is against us. That's even before we think about the terrible situation in Beirut right now, the plight of Yemeni children, the daily desperation of migrants trusting their lives to a tiny dinghy. It's into this scene of stormy waters that Jesus comes. At first, it's a sight of terror for the disciples, thinking that they were seeing a ghost or something to be afraid of. And it's into this fear 
that Jesus speaks. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Just imagine the sound of his familiar voice, what that would have felt like to them. To them. So I want to spend just a few moments this morning reflecting on these words of Jesus. More widely, both to his hearers and also to us now. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And I want to pick up three particular aspects of this short speech. The first is how Jesus uses his voice as a form of personal address. He uses his voice as a form of personal address. The second, he reveals his full identity, who he is and all that that represents. And thirdly, Jesus faces our fears. So first, Jesus uses his voice as a form of personal address. There are a number of examples in the New Testament of Jesus using his voice in this way, for a whole variety of different purposes, actually. He speaks kindly to the woman at the well with a complex history and tells her everything she ever did. He speaks to Zacchaeus to tell him to come down. We're going to your house for tea. He speaks to his mother and beloved disciple in that beautiful exchange from the cross. And of course, he speaks to Mary at the tomb when she thinks he's the gardener. Mary, he says, speaking into her tears. In a similar way, Jesus speaks to the fearful disciples battered by the storm to say, take heart. He uses his voice to address them personally and to reassure them by his presence. Well, Jesus still does this now, not usually by an audible voice, though it does sometimes happen, often through his word in scripture, the voice of his people, the church, the voice of reassurance to the afraid, comfort to the distressed, hope for the despairing. In these times, I believe the way we use our voice is important. Use it we must, both corporately and individually, as we seek to reflect the love of Christ in the world. Secondly, Jesus reveals his identity. It is I. Here I am. Only me. You know me. Simon Peter recognizes Jesus. And immediately, as Peter often does, he really wants to show his love and his commitment. He says, call me Lord, if it's really you. Now we know that he's soon overwhelmed by the noise and the waves and begins to sink. But it's then that Jesus is able to catch and hold him. Jesus reveals that he is the one who's able to walk on the water. He has the supernatural power to do miraculous things. As a church, we're called to make this Jesus known. And this is one of the commitments that we make as a Diocese of Sheffield at this time. If you're not familiar with the Lights for Christ community, may I suggest you go and have a look at the website, which has a lot of really excellent resources on it. For it shows all kinds of ways in which we, whoever we are, and however God has made us, can share the love of Jesus with the world around us in our everyday lives. There's some inspiring stories for you to read there. 
A few of us are called to serve in the church in particular ways, but most are called to be agents of his love and grace in the world wherever he sends us. Sometimes this is called our front line, the office, the home, the school gate, the gym, the pub, wherever he places us. And during lockdown, many of us found we had new opportunities in our streets with our neighbours as we stayed local and served one another. I first met one of my new neighbours by going to collect a prescription for her. Very simple, small acts of kindness can show the love of Jesus. Thirdly, and perhaps the most important of all Jesus' words here, do not be afraid. Of course, that's completely counter to their experience. All around them, the wind is raging. They've had no sleep and they're in a raging sea in the night. But the point is that Jesus comes in the midst of their fear. Not when they're all sorted out, not when the fear has gone away, right in the midst of it. And it caused me to wonder whether anyone here this morning carries fear with them. Perhaps your fear is known only to God alone. Perhaps you've not even voiced it, even in your own prayer yet. Well, the encouragement for each of us today in our gospel reading is that Jesus speaks his voice to us as our personal address. Jesus reveals who he is, the God of all authority and power, the one who can even walk on the water, and also that he is enough to receive our fear and take it into himself. Now, that's no, in no way intended to belittle the struggle with anxiety that some of us face. Neither is it to minimise the crippling effect that fear can have. Rather, it's meant to be an encouragement that even in the worst of times, Jesus is with us and is enough for us. I partly speak to myself today. There have been so many uncertainties as a result of COVID-19, and they are far from over. There will be an outworking of this situation for a long, long while yet. Every church and cathedral in the land has been affected. And it is, believe me, the strangest time to become a bishop. Though I do hope that you'll be able to join me at least by YouTube on the 21st of September at 11 a.m. But I also say it because I know that whatever the future holds, it will not be served well by us holding on to our fear in isolation. There is an action that results from this today. For Jesus invites us to step towards him in faith and trust. For some, that may be for the very first time today. For others, it may be a recommitment. You may wish to voice that to you privately to God, perhaps as you come to receive communion in a few moments' time, that you imagine yourself walking on that water towards him. Or if at home you're receiving communion in your heart, you make that simple commitment to him. There may also be someone in your network, among your circle of friends, colleagues, family, who really needs to know that the voice of Jesus invites them to step towards him and trust their lives to him. You may be the link for that very person as you pray for them and begin to speak those words today. There are those who've lived in fear and are now coming out of the shadows in this time. Not least those whose lives have been blighted by racism, 
systemic, individual and personal, as shown through the recent protests led by the Black Lives Matter movement following the tragic death of George Floyd. Environmental campaigners are also leading us to confront our fears about the planet, the rising sea levels and temperatures that are devastating the natural world. Poverty has also been highlighted in this time with the richest and the poorest divided by a gulf that's ever widening and their voices need to be heard. So what does our stepping out of the boat look like as we hear the voice of Jesus? as he reveals his identity and as we trust him with our fears. Almost 20 years ago, a book was published by the spiritual writer and psychologist, John Ortberg. It was called, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. It's a wonderful book. I've recommended it to very many people since that time, but it's not for the faint hearted. And in it, he says this, the decision to grow always involves a choice between risk and comfort. This means that to be a follower of Jesus, you must renounce comfort as the ultimate value of your life. Most of us, if we're honest, prefer comfort to risk for good and obvious reasons but that's not the life that we're called to as followers of Jesus Christ. We're called to be those who hear his voice, who recognize his identity and trust him with our fears and then walk. In his book, Ortberg says, there are times when all we can do is walk and it is enough. That will look different for each of us, but the call is the same. I'd like to finish now with a prayer for each one of us and for the church of which we're a part as we seek to do that walking today. Let us pray. This could be seen as a prayer for our journey and it's taken from the Lutheran Book of Worship, which was published in 1978 and adopted by the Church of England as a prayer for the renewal and reform of the church in our day. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of power and might, you alone bring us life and hope. Hear our prayer for your church, for Pete, our bishop, for Sophie to be consecrated Bishop of Doncaster, for Glynn, Bishop of Beverley, and Rod, Bishop of Maidstone. In the World Church, we pray today for the Church of Rwanda and for its Archbishop and Primate, Laurent. In our own diocese, we pray today for All Saints Lawton and St. John the Baptist Thropham, Michael, its priest in charge, and for All Saints Lawton Church of England Primary School, and Rachel, its head teacher. Let us pray that all Christians may take heart from the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid. May we share the comfort and hope that Jesus brings with our world. Lord, hear us. 
Gracious Lord, we thank you for the world you have created. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the leaders of our nation at this time of uncertainty and fear. We pray today particularly for seafarers, for those who serve in the Royal Navy, the Coast Guard, and the RNLI. Let us pray particularly for the port of Goul and for the large number of people who work there. Lord, hear us. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Saviour, who walks with us on our life's journey. We pray for all who travel with us, our families, our friends, and this cathedral community. We pray for a deepening awareness of our need for one another and that in serving one another, we serve also Christ. Lord, hear us. Loving God, we pray for those whose lives are troubled by illness, grief, poverty, or injustice. We pray for migrants on the sea and for the people of Beirut. We pray that in the darkness of suffering and pain, your light will shine to bring assurance, healing, and hope. Lord, hear us. In silence, we remember those for whom we wish especially to pray today. Lord, hear us. God of all power, strengthen our faith in your promises. When the wind and the waves mount up and threaten to overwhelm us, may we always remember the words of Jesus, take courage. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a reminder that as we come to the peace, we love to uh, greet one another, but if we could do that appropriately, socially distanced with a nod of the head or some other uh, appropriate gesture, that would be lovely. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day, the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter, St. Paul, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.
Please stand. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. It's been very lovely to be with you this morning and uh, you've been able to benefit from my smiling face and I feel rather deprived of um, most of yours, but I trust that the smiles are there behind uh, the face masks um, and uh, it really is very good to be with you. Um, so I shall don a face mask again uh, to walk amongst you, um, but it is really lovely to be here. And uh, I, uh, interestingly, it's 10 months today since I first drove down the motorway to have my interview uh, to become the next Bishop of Doncaster, and who could possibly have imagined what those 10 months uh, would be like. So uh, rather belatedly, I am with you, but it is nonetheless uh, with great joy uh, that I've been able to join you this morning. And I certainly look forward to being a more frequent visitor uh, in the cathedral uh, in the months and the years to come. So let's thank you. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I have to put the blessing now. Let's receive God's blessing as we go on our way to walk on the water wherever he may call us as his disciples, his lights for Christ in the world. So the Lord be with you. The Father whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. The Son who has ascended to the heights pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>